Hey guys, it's Keegan here with Airview Drone Technologies and today we're going to be getting into drone photogrammetry. What it is, how to use it, and why you should be using it today. So what is photogrammetry? Well, photogrammetry is the act of collecting images and data to create 2D and 3D models and maps. Now, how do we use this with our drones? Well, we can use the same technology by uploading a pre-flight path that our drone can take of a specific area that will allow it to capture images of that area to stitch together a map. All right, now I'll switch it over to show y'all how to set up your pre-flight plan. All right, guys, here we are in the flight planning app. For the sake of this video, we're using Pix4D Capture. Now, once you've loaded in, you're gonna to wanna to click on the icon in the top left, that little bullseye to get to your exact location if you are at the site. If not, you can search the location using search in the map at the top right, or find it just by scrolling around on the map, just like this, all right? So, since we have our location dialed in, we're gonna to wanna to start by clicking the plus icon here, selecting grid since we are creating a 2D model. Clicking next, and this will open up our flight path. Now we'll close this little side panel by clicking that arrow button there, and we will adjust this to fit the size of what we want to map. You can select these white squares to create a more detailed outline. Now, once we get our area that we want to map, you can click back on this tab on the side. Uh, this will open up a menu that will show us the flight time for this operation, the total area that we will be going around for mapping, uh, as well as giving us a couple options to edit in our settings. For example, right here in flight height, we are able to correct and change the different altitudes at which we will be taking these pictures from. So let's say for some reason I'm flying at 200 meters, this would be what the flight plan looks like. And if I were to fly at 10 meters, this is what the flight plan would look like. For the sake of this video, we will stick to around 100 to 120 feet. Now the font overlap and side overlap are things that you'll want to keep at roughly 80% and 70% most of the time. This is just so that the stitching software can put together and figure out which pictures align with each other. Camera angle, we always wanna have set at negative 90 degrees unless we are creating 3D models, but for the sake of this video, we will be only creating a 2D map. So make sure you always have that camera angle at negative 90 degrees and this is going to be the drone speed for our operation. So one thing to note real quick is that we can actually change the angle that our drone will take its flight from. Uh, for the sake of this video, actually, we're going to have it go horizontally, so side to side, uh, up and down through the rectangle. So the way that works is just by clicking, holding in the middle of the rectangle and rotating uh, using whichever finger it is you're holding down with. So now that we have our flight plan set up right here, actually we'll switch this to the other side. There we go. All right, so now that we have our flight plan set up, we will connect our drone to the program and click start mission. Once we do so, the drone will take off and begin going on its flight path through this pre-programmed flight plan. All right, now that we have our pre-flight plan all connected and loaded up, we're gonna set up our drone and launch this bad boy. Now, one piece of advice is with DJI drones, there can sometimes be a little bit of uh, connection problems. Uh, if you're taking off from the ground on concrete, since there is rebar in the concrete, it messes with uh, the connection with our drones. So I'd suggest that you set it up on something. I'm using my case. So I'll just set my drone down here on my case and we'll start our uh, flight mission. I will catch you all once we are complete with it. All 
Alright guys, so our drone has just finished up its mapping project. We'll go ahead and grab it real quick. Alright, so now that we've collected the data, we can send it over to our post-processing software where we can download and uh, stitch together the map to create our final product. So let's head over and do that. Alright guys, we're back with the post-processing now. What you're going to want to start by doing is uploading your SD card onto your computer and opening up the file like I have here. Now what you're going to want to do from here is copy and paste all of these images from your flight onto whatever software you're going to be using to process this data. Now I'm using drone to map which is an ArcGIS tool and processing software. Some of the other famous ones are Pix4D and Drone Deploy. These are all different types of softwares that do the uh, same thing in processing your data. All right, so now that we've got all of our uh, images uploaded onto our project, we're gonna give it a name. We've pre-done this already, naming it Parking Lot, and we've got our project location where we want it. So all we're gonna do now is begin our project and it will start to create our map. So now it will begin to show us the previous Google imagery of the area. Notice that my map uh, flight plan is a little bit different than what I showed you in the previous part of this video. That's because at the time of this video, my Mavic 3 was out of commission. So I had to use the DJI Mini 3 to conduct this experiment where at each individual point I had to do this manually. So this entire mapping project was done manually. With how it's supposed to be set up, these lines will follow the exact flight plan and show you the points at which your photograph is taken, just like how we set it up before. So that's the only reason this looks a little bit different than what it should look like, all right? Uh, so what we're going to do next is select true ortho for the sake of this video. We're not going to create any other types of models. However, you do have the option to with this software. Now that we have everything completed, we can begin our processing software by clicking start right here. So whatever software you're using, it's going to be done relatively the same. Uh, for drone deploy, it's going to be on a queue though, since it is a cloud-based processing software. Uh, meaning that you will get your results within six to eight hours or a day, depending on how long that queue is to process. Now, once again, for the sake of this video, we're using drone to map So my computer will be doing all the work. So we will click yes here. And the computer is going to start crunching this map together, stitching all those photographs to where they're supposed to be, creating one big puzzle piece that's going to turn into a map of this parking lot. Now I'll get back with y'all once this thing is completed and we'll view the final results. All right guys, our map is complete and look at this. Now you might be wondering what is this little uh, blotch right here? And the only reason that this data was not collected is because once again, I was manually taking these pictures. And as you can see, there is a large gap right here, which means I must have uh, not captured an image for this specific spot. Now, besides that, for the rest of the project, everything looks great. I mean, the quality of detail here, let's get these uh, project lines out of the way. Um, the project detail looks absolutely fantastic. We can zoom in on both of these. We've got our trailer here that was uh, located on the back end of the parking lot. Um, we've got our poles, light poles. And look at this, the detail, uh, especially let's look at the handicapped parking spots right here. Uh, the detail that we were able to capture from um, 130 feet up in the air, uh, which is the height that we flew at to capture all this data. Now, this is a very high quality map. Uh, I'd say we did a fantastic job besides this little blotch. Um, but everything else looks great and your map should look almost exactly like this if you did a map of a parking lot as well, for an example. So where can we use this technology out in the field? Well, let's start with construction. Using drone photogrammetry, it enables us to now track the progress of our projects week by week or month by month, whatever it may be. We're able to create 2D and 3D models to show the progress and change in time of different sites. 
We can also ensure that worker safety is a top priority by reviewing these images and making sure that things are where they're supposed to be and not potential hazards for the workers, as well as verifying that the plans are actually uh, being put into place and followed with a guarantee. Now we can also get into stockpile imaging and capturing of that data, which will enable us to get precise measurements of stockpiles on construction sites as well. Another industry we can look into going to is agriculture. We can use NDVI models, which will allow us to track vegetation and plant health, as well as density of plant life. This is useful for farmers since it allows for them to stay up to date with their crops. Any potential areas that aren't receiving the right amount of water will be able to be located since it will pop up on NDVI filters or models uh, since those areas will be seen as less lush and green. Now with environmental monitoring, we're gonna be able to show companies that we're working with potential changes in wildlife habitats and ecosystems over time, whether it be through deforestation, uh, erosion, potential severe storms coming in, or environmental disasters, or human-made disasters, whatever the case might be, and keep whatever company we're working with in the loop on what's going on in the ecosystem around us. Now, there are many more types of fields that we can go into, but I just wanted to cover those three for the sake of this video today. Uh, feel free to look it up on Google, different types of drone uh, photogrammetry fields to go into. There is going to be an unlimited uh, list of results to come up. Um, so feel free to check those out as well. Thank you guys for sticking around towards the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below about any future video ideas you may have for us or questions you have as well. Also, consider liking and subscribing since this is a weekly series that we will be keeping up with. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all in next week's video.